is Dr. Clayton Lane. This video will be about computer navigated knee replacement. So we talked a little bit about cartilage restoration in the other videos. What do we do when cartilage restoration fails? Well at that point the term is really osteoarthritis. Now osteoarthritis is loss of cartilage like we saw in the acute cartilage injuries in the other videos. However, there's also a change in the quality of cartilage that remains in the knee. Um, and this is what's different between acute cartilage injury and arthritis. The remaining cartilage is less elastic, it's weaker, it's more rough, and even has less ability to heal. And here's an arthroscopic picture of that. Here you can see the cartilage is completely gone and what we have is bone on bone arthritis. And this cartilage that's around it is not normal cartilage or healthy cartilage either. And so really the only treatment for this, despite what anything in the media or other says, is a knee replacement where you replace this with metal and the tibia side with plastic and that's a knee replacement. When is a knee replacement needed? Well, the x-rays are helpful. If there's two or more of the three compartments of the knee that are involved with moderate to severe arthritis, as you can see here, uh, here's the three compartments, medial, lateral, and patellofemoral. On the inside of the knee here, there's no space between the bones in this standing view. Over here, the space is maintained by cartilage and meniscus. Here, you have bone touching bone, so that's severe arthritis. And then underneath the kneecap, you see large bone spurs with bone touching bone, and this is moderate to severe arthritis as well. Now, we don't treat the x-ray. If this person was completely painless, then I would not recommend a knee replacement. However, if they were having pain that's limiting daily activities, then they may be a candidate. And additionally, they have have to have already failed non-operative treatments such as injections. If a patient with this x-ray responds to an injection then obviously that's a much simpler solution than a knee replacement. Contraindications, uh, relative contraindications mean that there's a higher chance of complication. That would be in patients that are obese, have diabetes, or a smoker, chronic illness, or poor cir circulation. The main absolute indication in which knee replacement should never be done is if there's an active infection in a patient. So what's the computer navigation? Basically it's a more precise measurement tool than we've ever had uh, in orthopedic surgery. Um, it's also somewhat safer in respect to certain potential complications such as blood loss and the risk of fat emboli. And the reason is the standard way of measuring the angles in the knee are to drive a rod up the femur and the tibia during the surgery. And by doing that you allow extensive bleeding from the bone as well as increase the pressure inside the bone and increase the risk of fat emboli. So those two issues are uh, not applicable to navigate a computer knee replacement where those rods are not used. It's also real important to realize what computer navigation is not. It is not a replacement for a good surgeon. It's not robotic surgery. It's simply a more precise measurement tool as I stated earlier. So here's our case presentation. A 67 year old female, avid golfer and swimmer. She's no longer able to play 18 holes of golf due to persistent pain in the knee and she's also failed conservative management such as injections and bracing. So here you see the two x-rays that I showed you previously and here's an additional preoperative x-ray which is very important, the alignment view. Here you can see that over the years as she's lost cartilage on the inside of the knee she's fallen into an abnormal bowed appearance of the lower extremity. Typically when we draw a line from the center of the femoral head to the center of the ankle. In normal anatomy, that line should come through the center of the knee, uh, indicating good alignment. And you can see hers has moved to the inside of the knee, indicating that she has this bowed deformity of the knee as shown here. So we're going to aim to correct that during her knee replacement surgery. Here you can see I've applied the sensor to the femur or the thigh bone, and I'm telling the computer where it's located. So it knows it's on the femur, now I'm moving the femur around in a circular motion and the computer can calculate based on the algorithm where the center of the hip is. Next I'll use a pointer which the computer can also see and indicate where the center of the knee is. 
Here you see I'm telling the computer the alignment of the knee, the anterior posterior axis. And it's very important to get this just right because again the computer is only a measurement tool. I have to accurately tell it where the anatomic landmarks are. Now you can see I'm what's called painting the medial femoral condyle telling the computer where the edge of the bone is. And there's the lateral femoral condyle. So once we've inputted all our data into the computer, as we attach our cutting guide as seen here with a uh, sensor on it, the computer can register that and now I can align that guide in relation to the anatomic landmarks which the computer already has recorded. There you can see uh, the yellow line indicates where my cut will be if I leave the jig where it is. Here you can see the whole apparatus. Um, I'm pointing, I'm going to point out a few things here. Uh, in a minute, there's a pin going into the cutting guide. You can see that that cutting guide is connected to the sensor that I pinned to the femur earlier. And that's how the computer knows where the cutting guide is in space. Now I'm able to remove all my sensors. The cutting guide's firmly pinned to the end of the femur. And I'll make my distal femoral cut. I know that this cuts uh, appropriately aligned with the mechanical axis based on all of those landmarks that we took, but at any time, if I don't feel comfortable with the way it, the cut looks based on the anatomy, then I can change that guide, and that's how it's different than robotic surgery or uh, preoperative computer planning. There you can see my distal femoral cuts complete. I'm very happy with it with the way that looks. So I'm proceeding now with the tibia. The sensor is placed on the tibia side now. And I'm doing the same type thing we did for the femur. I'm taking uh, landmarks within the knee and telling the computer where those landmarks are in relation to the sensor that I've pinned to the tibia. Here you can see those landmarks, the tibia center, the tibia AP axis, the medial compartment and lateral compartment of the tibia. There you see I just clicked off the medial malleolus and find the lateral malleolus of the ankle. Now you can see my cutting guide's in place and as I'm moving it around the yellow line will move indicating where my cut will be if I pin it in that position. When it blinks uh, out of view like that, that means the hand or something's in front of the sensor so we have to adjust that. There you can see the yellow line coming down to where uh, I want my cut to be. And once I'm happy with it, again, it's pinned into place and I make the appropriate cut on the tibia. Now I know with confidence based on the computer that this will be a perfect mechanical axis. Here you see another patient's knee. I wanted to show the components. I just pointed out the PCL there and I'm showing how the PCL keeps it from sliding backward. And there you can see uh, the knee going through a range of motion so you get somewhat of an idea of how the knee is going to work. Then when I put the kneecap back in place, you can see how the kneecap is going to run in that groove as well once the arthrotomy is closed. So here we have our case example again. Here's our preoperative photos again showing that abnormal mechanical uh, alignment. And here you can see three months after the knee replacement, the bright white here is the metal components of the prosthesis. The clear space is where the plastic is. But most importantly, you can see that the mechanical axis of the knee is restored again aligned through the center of the femoral head to the center of the ankle falls in the center of the knee.